Welcome to this lesson on gerunds. In this lesson, we are going to look at the grammatical functions of gerunds and what they entail. Well, before we begin, we should first understand what a gerund is and how a gerund is formed. Is it a verb or is it a noun? Gerunds are generally very easy to spot because of their formation, so basically the way they are formed. Gerunds are actually ing forms of verbs, but they're not part of any verb tense. They simply have a verb force. So they are words that act as nouns. Well, we first mentioned that they are very easy to spot. And that's true for all gerunds, because it is simply built with the ending ing that is always attached to the initial verb. For example, the word read, and then you just attach it to the end of the tail, you attach ing, so you have reading. What's also very interesting about gerunds is that they may be affirmative or negative, which basically means that there can be positive statements or negative statements in a sentence. So when you use a negative gerund, you simply add not as a negation beforehand. There are three exceptions that may be familiar. One, if a verb ends in the order consonant plus stressed vocal plus consonant, then the last consonant is doubled. Two, if a verb ends with the vocal plus consonant and an E, the E is removed when building the gerund. Three, if a verb ends with IE, then the IE is turned into a Y. Examples to illustrate the rules. For one, it is run, running, the N is doubled. For two, it is come, they are coming without an E. For three, it is lie, she is lying, the IE is turned into a Y. Parent is always used as a subject. For example, in the sentence, cycling is good for your health, you can see that cycling is not as a verb, but a subject. Apart from that, using the gerund is mostly context related. After certain adjectives, you use the gerund. For example, in the sentence, he is afraid of going by plane, afraid is the adjective that triggers the gerund going. The next category would be prepositions. Some prepositions are followed by gerunds as well. Even certain verbs can trigger gerunds. For example, the verb to enjoy. In the sentence, to enjoy cooking, cooking is a gerund. Verbs combined with prepositions have the same effect on gerunds. Last but not least, gerunds can come after certain nouns too. In the sentence, we had problems finding our way back home. The noun problems is followed by the gerund finding. Pro now, after we had learned when to use the gerund, let's focus on using infinitives. There are also some rules when to use the infinitive. Let's start by adjectives. You have to use the pl 2 plus infinitive form after adjectives. For example, he is lucky to have such good friends. Lucky is followed by to have, which is an infinitive form. Let's go on. You also have to use the infinitive forms after nouns. For instance, it was a good decision to move to San Francisco. Moreover, not only after adjectives or nouns, the infinitive form is used also after question words in direct and indirect speech. On the other hand, there are some verbs which can be followed by a gerund or infinitive without changing the meaning, like love, hate or like. Those verbs don't change the meaning by using the gerund or infinitive. Attention! Sometimes both infinitive and gerund are possible, but then the meaning of the sentence changes. For example, I stopped to smoke, which intends that I stopped an action to smoke a cigarette. And 
I stopped smoking, which intends that I quit smoking. This video is just for educational reasons. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.